Hola a todos, my name is Jordi Molina and I am going into my fifth year at Humboldt State University as a forestry major with a concentration in forest conservation and a minor in geospatial analysis. In today's episode of Redwood Exploration, made in partnership with Latino Outdoors and Save the Redwoods League, we'll be exploring the beauty of the Arcata Community Forest and more specifically the Redwood Park. Before I begin, I would like to acknowledge that we are on We Out Land. Okay everybody, follow me. students at HSU, the Arcata Community Forest has become a big part of their outdoor experience, as it was for me. The Arcata Community Forest is mainly composed of redwood species. This is not a redwood, this is a sicta, but this is a redwood tree. <laughs> Coming from Los Angeles, I never really had a relationship with the outdoors due to the lack of access. However, the idea of preserving the outdoors was already in mind. Being involved with the outdoors while being a first generation Chicana is not always an easy thing to do, as there's not much representation of POC in the outdoors, especially when there's discussion of outdoor recreation. However, that makes my contributions that much more valuable and necessary. The reason why I'm standing in the forest today to tell you why you should connect with it, restore it, and protect it. So this is a good spot to tell you guys about the various friends that you'll most likely run into when you're in the Redwood Forest. So there's various type of fern. There's this, the sword fern. I believe the scientific name is Polystichum munintim. The dots indicate where the sora used to be and soras are used for the ferns to reproduce. Another common fern that you'll see is the lady fern. It's more fluffier than the sword fern. And the scientific name for the lady fern is Etheria felix femina. As you can assume, femina and lady go hand in hand, lady fern. All right, let's continue. So some other common shrubs that you'll see is the salmonberry bush. And these are edible. <laughs> Fun fact. That berry was delicious. A little tart, but still good. The scientific name, I believe, is Rubus spectabilis. But right underneath the salmonberry, we also spotted a banana slug. A quick fun fact about the banana slug is if you lick it, the slime that it leaves on your tongue acts like an anesthetic and it numbs your tongue. A lot of people do it here for some reason. It looks odd, but it's pretty fun. So I just spotted some redwood sorrel and these plants are usually edible, but you want to check the leaves for underneath it. Some of them have like this red coating and those are the ones that you want to eat. But the other ones that don't have red coatings, you do not want to eat those because those are super tart. However, let's look for some edible ones right now because I'm hungry. <laughs> look, perfect. It has red underneath it. And thank God it's been raining, so a natural wash. Has a lemony taste to it. The cool thing about these trees is that even though they get chopped down, they still like to re-sprout. Ba 
da, da, what I buy. More ladybirds. So some of the broadleaf species that you'll run into as well is red outer and cascara. And the scientific name of cascara is Ramnus persiana. And the way I was able to remember this is by the name cascara rhymes with muscara and like the leaf veins. If you see the leaf veins or the details, they kind of look like eyelashes. All right, let's continue. Before European settlers occupied the Arcata Community Forest, the Arcata Community Forest was used by the Wiat tribe for hunting and fishing and basic living necessities. However, in the early 1960s to the 1970s, the redwood trees were used for timber production to accommodate a growing population. They needed this timber for housing. In some trees, you could still see the markings of where they used to put the planks where past foresters used to stand on to cut down the merchantable species, as you can see here. After timber harvest, a forest would usually experience successful secondary growth. Usually in a logged area, you will see a lot of regeneration. This regeneration is what makes up the Arcata Community Forest today. A few years after, the government actually began to refocus its attention on the ecological value of the Redwood Forest. This limited the amount of logging happening in the Redwood Forest in order to prioritize habitat for wildlife and also help restore ecosystems within the Redwood Forest. This forest now holds educational, recreational, and ecological value for the surrounding communities. All right, let's continue. Found this cone. It's from a Sika spruce. Scientific name is Picea sicensis. I don't see any of them around here at the moment, so I don't know how this cone got here. But let's continue. All right, let's let it be. This right here is a thimbleberry, and the scientific name, I believe, is Rubus parviflorus. <laughs> Everyone has a different way they interact with the redwood forest. Some people do biking to let the terrain take them away. Another common activity that they do right here in the redwood forest is mushroom hunting. These are usually the hidden treasures of the redwood forest. The redwood forest provides us with more than just its beauty. It provides us with a natural home that everybody is welcome to. Nurturing this connection is important because it shows us the similarities we share with the forest, like that the roots are the reason for our strength and our growth. Let's continue. So when you're going into a redwood forest, you'll see like a lot of conifers, but conifers are very similar to each other in appearance. At least to me it was, it was kind of difficult to distinguish them. But some distinguishing features would be like the cones, for instance, and leaves. This cone in particular belongs to a Sika spruce, the scientific name being Picea sicensis. And how convenient that we're in front of two of them. The way you can spot a Sika spruce in a redwood forest it's by its bark. A lot of people describe it as a potato chip bark. They're this thin and they're easily flaky. They're my favorite kind of chips. Just kidding. It's not recommended to be eaten. However, only 4% of old growth redwood forests still remain. This is why it's important that we advocate for old growth and redwoods in general, because these are natural carbon sequesters. They reduce the amount of CO2 that we have on Earth, and thus, this slows down the rate of climate change. Not only that, but there are species that are also old growth dependent, like the northern spotted owl. If the northern spotted owl were to 
experience a decline in population, this would affect the food chain. This would ultimately affect wildlife indirectly or directly in one way or another. Not only environmentally altering, there are studies that suggest redwood forests have shown positive influence on an individual's mental health. For many, the forest has been a place of exploration, discovery, and newly found connection, whether it's with themselves or with the natural world. The forest is a place that allows you to disconnect from the outside world and encourages you to connect with yourself. It makes you mindful of your senses and reminds you to be present. For me, I know it slows down the world for me when it gets a little overwhelming. It's a place where I'm able to recenter myself and I am able to think more clearly. I always associated trees with wisdom and so every time I have a breakthrough in thoughts, I would say I channel that specific characteristic from the tree. It sounds so weird, but in so many ways, it's comforting. These redwood species have lived for thousands of years. Their wisdom has been built for generations and our human interactions are embedded in their soil. I still have a lot to learn about the redwood forest, but I'm glad I was able to teach you what I know about the redwood forest or the redwood park, should I say. But once again, muchas gracias y los veo al rato.